keep myself in the dark shadows watching over me over me you'll flick the switch made a spark from then on i want my heart upon my sleeve with you i bear all the scars i was left with paper skin you left me in a different heart Hello everyone and welcome to EPT Retro. Yes, we are back as we take our retrospective look at early seasons of the European Poker Tour. I'm James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. Didn't really need to say it because the names are on the screen. And guess what, Joe? We have done something we have never done before in our decade working together. We left the people wanting more. Retro <laughs> finished in the summer. People wanted it back. Here it is. We have got six more streams as we are about to blow through season seven of the European Poker Tour that ran from 2010 to 2011. And we always said, Joe, that we would stop at that point. Otherwise, the snake is really going to start to eat its tail up to its stomach, potentially up to its neck. Well, as it stands, we're going to get a little taste of the tail, I believe, at the tail end of season seven. 
Indeed, which would have been the first time that you and I worked together. But of course, we begin at the beginning. This is how it works. We take the old TV shows from the PokerStars archive, we strip off the original commentary, and we provide a new look. I'm seeing it for the second time, but guys, it's been 10 years. I remember very little of what happened. Joe is going to be seeing 90% of these shows for the first time, so we're going to give an original view on things. Now, Season 7. Where does every season of the European Poker Tour begin, Joe? Barcelona. Incorrect, because some genius thought, let's move Barcelona to November when the weather's really cold, because that's when everyone wants to go to a beach city. Uh, that genius is now CEO of Apple Macintosh. There are some other bad decisions coming up, but let's start with the background to the seventh season of of the EPT. It started in August of 2010 and it started somewhere I've never been and Joe has been and that's unusual because most European cities you'd think that there'd be a few places that Joe hasn't visited but no Tallinn the Estonian capital is somewhere you got to go I want to say two or three years ago now? Yeah it was well it feels recently but honestly time has no meaning anymore. It could have been five years ago it could have been one I'm not really sure. Um. Anyway Tallinn was where EPT7 began. The first leg, not streamed, not televised, won by Kevin Starney. The next leg, just a few weeks later, was in Villamora in Portugal, won by Toby Lewis. Martin Jakobsen, the runner-up in that event. Again, no stream, no TV shows. The first stop of the European Poker Tour in Season 7 that saw the cameras brought to the venue was London and for the second year running for only the second ever time the Hilton Metropole Hotel the convention center there was the venue for this event running under the license of the Grosvenor Victoria Casino this event taking place from the 29th of September to the 4th of October 2010 and for the TV shows and remember we always use the TV shows for retro rather than the live stream interestingly throughout season seven it was the only final table stream season so there are no streams of the early days of these events, but the cameras were rolling and a new approach was brought out, Joe, to cover this event because there was this feeling that we needed to see these events from the beginning. So, hey, let's televise day 1A, let's televise day 1B, and then let's miss out days two, three, and four and pick up the action with the final table. Makes sense, right? Um, well, I, I know you're gonna hate me for this. It kind of makes sense in that they were probably like a, a little bit like, oh, there's always these great names that play, but they don't always make the final table. So let's make sure we get them and then get the final table. I think is probably what the rationale was. I think there were two things at play here. The first is you're absolutely right. And I do think it was driven a lot by the PokerStars ambassadors who were on the roster at the time. Let's really have a chance to see them in action. Let's showcase their play. Yeah. And let's make sure that by covering day 1A and making two TV shows from day 1A and covering day 1B and again making two shows from that day that we could really showcase big names and big PokerStars pros. But there is another thing. In the summer of 2010, you may, may have heard of it, Joe. If it hasn't come onto your radar, that's okay. There was a TV show in America called The Big Game. And it was very popular. And it became the thing at PokerStars that everything had to be like The Big Game. Because, of course, we can't let cash games be cash games and tournaments be tournaments. Everything has to be the same. And, hey, this worked, so let's apply that rule to everything. So there are two key things. Wait, are you trying to tell me that they made the European Poker Tour pot limit pre-flop and no limit after the flop? No, but there was this belief that if you're going to make good TV poker, you have to have deep stacks. And therefore, this belief that if you cover the day ones, where everyone starts with like a gajillion big blinds, that's going to make for more interesting TV. That's point one. Point two is this belief that people like the kind of private exclusive feel of the big game so hey let's create an enclosed set that looks a little bit like a cocktail lounge inside the venue where you can't actually see any of the other tournament and can't see any of the outer tables so that was the influence of the big game on the EPT. Um, I did say that one of the ideas of covering those day ones was to showcase the big names, including players like this guy, the Elkster, Elky, who is going to be on our feature table for the start of day 1A. We'll see who else is at this table. Uh, enough 
of our yakking, no real setup for this event. Because at this point in time, we don't know how many players there are going to be because it's still the first level of day 1A. We do know that the blinds are 5,100 and we do know that Elki is taking his seat inside the cocktail bar to play some poker at the London leg of EPT7. Let's light this candle. I would just like to reiterate that the one thing from the big game that when applied to the EPT that actually worked was Joe Stapleton. So Elki at this table, along with Pierre Neuville. Shoes that you arrive at first. <laughs> it was so easy to pick up your blood. <laughs> and also Michel Abacassis. So definitely a strong French flavor to this table. Is that John Reisner? Who stole it? Absolutely. Where's the gum? Just this one shot. Oh, someone else has the gum. I wonder if he stole that idea from him. So this is Bassam El Najjar from Lebanon, ace jack of spades. And El Najjar opens to 275. A reminder, this is the first blind level, starting stack of 30k, blinds of 5100. Pierre Neville calling with a7 of clubs. Elki with king-queen offsuit. Many playable hands here. Well, this is one of the good things about day one action is we can get multi-way pots. So with Michel Abacassis folding the button, it's Yotem Bar Yosef who calls out of the small blind with 6-5 of diamonds. And Mariano Paganelli calls out of the big blind with King-8 of hearts. Five-way action, Joey. Everybody with a good starting hand. Bar Bar Yosef. Sorry. And it's top two for Elke. See, and this is why you got to show day one action. Otherwise, you'd probably miss Elke flopping top two. So with the action checked to Elke, he's going to bet into a pot of 1,375. It's a bet of 775. Paganelli has got top pair with a not great kicker. He calls. El Najjar, I mean, the pre-flop aggressor's got a gut shot and looks like he's in. Pierre Neville's out. Gut shot backdoor spades. I mean, look, calling with King 8 there, you called. Pre-flop, you hit top pair. It's really tough to fold, but that many players in the hand and you're being let into. So El Najjar now picks up a pair, third pair on board. Check to Elke for a second street, and he bets pretty big, 2,125. Yeah, I, I love this play from Elke. Yes, sometimes ace-10 is going to have stuck around and made a straight on you, but a lot of times if anyone improves, it's going to be to a worse two pair. Paganelli calling a second time. Don't love it. So we are going three-way to the river with one-third starting stack in the pot. And it is a 10 on the river. That is Broadway for El Najjar. This is just such an insanely bad run out. Whoops. And he shoves the river. Huge overbet. Obviously, we had that reference at the start to the fact that Elkies arrived late. So some hands have already been played, and El Najjar's already run his stack up to over 40K. Bombs the river, gets folds. <laughs> and in fact, we just heard Thomas Kremser announced there that blinds are going up. So we've reached the second level of the day. Blinds now 75 at 150. And we have got 347 players remaining. And remember, this is only half the field. This is the first of two starting flights. Day 1B to follow as we get a limp from Ali Aslami, ace four of spades. Looks like a kid. Elki also has ace four, ace four of diamonds. Relative to the older Ali Aslami I'm used to seeing. Snowman's num num. Come on. Raise to 700 from Yotem Bar Yosef. 
And with the blinds folding, action back on as Alami. Yeah, both Islami and Elki call. So three-way to this flop. And it is a wheel draw for both Elki and Islami. Bar Yosef still ahead for now with pocket eight. Uh, and worth pointing out that, of course, this is still within 18 months of Elki winning the PCA main event and winning the PCA high roller the following year. And we know that hot streak will never be matched. Yeah, we didn't know at this point that Elki would go through somewhat of a dry spell. Spoiler alert. We don't know how far he gets in this, but he's not going to win. I'm talking about the tournament, not this particular hand. I've no idea how this hand's going to play out. Seems like he's not going to win. At least he has a diamond. Diamond's now irrelevant, and Bar F is now an 84% favorite. It's one of those situations with your pocket eights here. You just hate this board, though. 84% equity, and somehow nobody has any of it. Any of it. Does Elki want to stick around with the gut shot? Nope. Does Bar Yosef realize what a huge favorite he is here? No. Yeah, and with no the semi-bluff, Zalami wins the pot. And again, we see an increase in the blinds. This is the 48th hand of the day, and blinds are now 100-200. And this is one of the consequences of trying to cover day one of a huge multi-day MTT. You're not actually going to get that many interesting hands, that many TV hands per level. We've seen one hand from level one, one hand from level two. We're already on the third level of the day. I mean, there's a reason why they call it the all-in game, right? Like, those are often some of the best TV hands, and that shouldn't be happening very much on day one. Well, this is a raise from Aslami, and Michelle Abacassi says Jack-10 on the button. <coughs> Three bet with Jack-10. All right. Jack-10, 2010. And a somewhat surprising call from Mariano Paganelli flats the three bet in the big blind with ace nine off and flops top pair however trip jacks for abacasis i don't like his chances here both literally and figuratively remember you said surprising but this is king eight guy from before Ray927 asks, can James and Joe see chat? Unfortunately, we can't. Thank you for your question. Cascap says, my only regret in poker was that I only discovered it four years ago. Missed out on this history. Don't worry about missing out on the history. Worry about missing out on the fact that everyone was terrible. Paganelli decided to lead this, got raised by Abacassis and called. This hand going to the turn. This is wonderful. Okay, Paganelli is drawing super thin now. At least he slowed down. I I'm hoping this is the white flag of surrender being waved here as he checks this turn card. I think this is the white fla flag of trapping being waved here. I think if Abacassis can somehow go small here, Paganelli might raise him. Okay, so Paganelli's got clearly less than 10k behind. Abacassis bets enough to put Paganelli all in. Ha! <laughs> no. He's not seriously thinking about calling this, is he? 
I mean, this was a full pot size bet, right? Like, oh god, he's yep. just called all in. I mean, he's not drawing dead. Your classic suck out, James. Ace nine was ahead pre flop. Yeah. And that will see Mariano Paganelli eliminated on the third level of day 1A of EPT London from 2010. Arrivederci. You know what? He, oh, I was going to say he went out looking kind of cool at the Arrivederci, but then the microphone thing got him. <laughs> so close yet so far. Uh, so these are the big stacks or the chip leaders at this point on day 1A. Lex House in the top 10. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Must be a it's early. typo. Uh, Thomas Bichon, the current chip leader. And these are the stacks at the current feature table where Pierre Neuville is chip leader. Strong fold there. Elkie with Kojak. Raises to 500. I'm sure you remember, Joe, over the course of our main retro run when we went through seasons one to six, we had a lot of conversations about how we were seeing the evolution of poker. It seems it took a giant step backwards towards the tail end of 2010 <laughs> based on what we've seen okay. so far. I don't want to be rude, but this was before certain countries were, were still a little bit behind at this point, as I'll say. And those countries have since then come a long way, countries like Italy and Spain. But so even though we're in 2010, they're still playing like 2005 poker. <coughs> France also could be included in that, other than Elki. Elki flopping the gut shot, wins it on the flop. And now it is time to step inside the mind of a cyborg. Joseph, we get to sweat with Bertrand Gropelier. We get to sweat with Elki and play this hand from his perspective. We're only going to see his hole cards. Uh, Crazy Sando asks, this is live? No, it happened in uh, September of 2010. Thank you for your question. I'm looking forward to this sweat with Elki. One, because Elki's a complete wackadoo. Two... Because oftentimes the um, choices of sweat with hand from this era were baffling at best, so they can be quite interesting. Well, we have got a raise from El Najjar, who the last time we saw him open was Ace Jack. So he's opened here to 600. Elki flats with Ace 10. Yeah, pretty tough to fold Ace 10, but. If all the information we have so far is that Elijar opened with Ace Jack, then be a little cautious. An Ace King Eight flop, top pair for Elki. <coughs> and El Najjar continuing for twelve hundred. This feels like a spot where you have to call one time. It's a classic. You don't like it, but you have to go along with it. Yeah. You're like, well, what, what did you want? Mm -hmm. El seems to wear his heart on his sleeve a little bit. He doesn't look super pleased with this situation. Deuce of clubs on the turn. 1,200. 1,200. And that's the same as his flop bet, right? 1,200? Same as his flop bet, and he's so demonstrative with it and flicking it in and announcing it loudly. Like, my physical read here is weakness. I, I would want to fold to a second barrel, but the body language. My body is it telling me yes. <laughs> At 1,200 again. Oh, wow. This, this guy is just milking Elkie on every single street. 
Dude, I get in these situations all the time where I'm like, I can't fold now, and then they just turn over Ace Queen, and you're like, awesome. Alki well, calls. Yeah, What's it going to be? Ace Queen or Ace no, Jack? He didn't call. Oh. Oh. And this is where I probably could use it to learn a lesson here. Because you don't always have to just call for that price. And maybe you can raise and you can fold out ace-jack. Well, El Najjar nope. has called this thin raise. El Najjar does have ace-queen. <laughs> oh, Elki's not happy. Elki disgusted. I'm not happy. I didn't even barely played that. I mean, I was dead wrong on the turn. Elki so livid about that sweat with hand that he's demanded to be taken off the main stage and that means we're going to have to bring in a new feature table competing for that main event trophy. Who's on the stage now? We've got some former champions. Kevin McPhee, who we saw take down Berlin the previous season. Victoria Corrin, soon to become Victoria Corrin Mitchell, winner of London in season three. Tightening down for the TV. I just think it's kind of funny that we were Anton Wig, like, the reigning Copenhagen game. champ. Like and there is Selena Lynn, winner of the 2009 Macau Poker Cup. I just love what Vicky Corn brings to the table. Anton Wig with pocket eights. He's got the snowmen's. Num num. So this is still day 1A. Of, that was Fabian Quas. Did you see it? I did see it. Young Fabian. Hot Quas buns. Vicky with king three of hearts. He's going to three bet to 2,000. What a three bet. What a strange three betting candidate. We're trying to three bet out a Swede. I don't know about that. Okay, well, it's a five tray deuce flop. So, second pair for Vicky. Backdoor hearts working for her. Anton Wig, nearly a three to one favorite with the over pair to the board. Vicky continuing for three and a half K. Pretty tough to get eights to fold here. Only wrapping over pairs. Just check realize. this out. Vicky playing on the image that yes. in 2010, no, girls never bluff. Not queen nine. You, you promised me to show if you play queen nine. Yeah, no, but I told now okay. we're on the TV table. I'm not going to be playing rubbish like queen nine. All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want, not what people can see. Not only, like Joe, like do we have the young Fabian Quas at this feature table, but sat next to Vicky, the other side, obviously we've got Kevin McPhee there. The other side is two-time EPT runner-up, Martin Tussaud. Just play normally. I thought you were play normally, that's what you said. Kevin, how do you want me to play? Just play normally. You told her how to play? How I want you to play? Any wishes? No. You play. You play good, man. You play really good. I'm the tightest player. On the yeah, he doesn't want you playing normally. <laughs> I've seen one hand from you. That's quads, right? <laughs> only play quads. Did he yeah, say quads? Yeah, <laughs> so this bet from Chris Sellin is 750 with Jack 10 of clubs. Vicky's called with 9-7 of clubs. Okay, queen, ten, five with two clubs. This can get real dicey. I wait to hear what the flop is and what the bet is when he says, because for me, it's just like mist over there, mist <laughs> on the moor. How, what did he say it was? One? <laughs> There's something in the mist. Like Vicky calling the 1200 with a no good club draw. Ace on the turn. 
Did you hear that? They said hold cards. And Vicky folds to the barrel on the turn. 2,000 from Sullen wins him the pot. Why don't you wear contacts? I'm too squeamish for contacts. Again, not on a TV table, I can wear these prescription glasses. But here, people might tune in and think I'm the kind of person who wears sunglasses in a poker game. Yeah, Just you don't want to be that. Like, because I think it's cool. <laughs> God forbid. I can totally get behind completely being terrible at poker and not being able to see the board just because you don't want people to think you're a douche. Vicky raises with ace jack. Martin Susort with ace king. Okay, we have got Ricky Wilmot involved in this hand. I mean, is there any surprise that there is an English flag against this guy's avatar? You can't be any other nationality with the name Ricky Wilmot. <laughs> Evan Scott has got the snowmans. Num num. A lot of pocket eights being dealt today. Eights are hot. Eights were so hot back in this era that on my podcast at the time, we had a sound drop for pocket eights and not for any other hand. And pocket eights. Also got Johannes Heldens in this pot. We are five way to the flop, which is seven, five, three. There's only one way to protect your eights here. Massive bet on this flop. Well, instead, Evan Scott has checked. Massive Vicky. check raise on this flop. Okay, well, here's the opportunity because Vicky continues to 4K. What? There you go. It's over. Who folds eights on a seven high board? You did not get your massive check raise on the flop. I'm so sorry. I was predicting a different terrible way to play it. <laughs> As it was a terrible way it was played. <laughs> 272 players remaining on day 1A of this London leg of Season 7 of the EPT. Still have this feature table headlined by Vicky Corrin, who's got pocket sixes here. Blind to nail 150, 300, and she has raised to 800. It's crazy how much respect Vicky's getting right now. Selena Lynn calling with Queen Jack of Clubs. Fabian Quas, 7-4 diamonds. Whoa. This move a little questionable. Oh, baby dog 975 raised a good point. Hate the new stats graphic because it no longer contains the time. It's a very important detail of what the time of day was all those years ago. Oh, a couple of funky hands in the mix here as we go five way to the flop. This would be amazing if Kevin McPhee and Fabian Foss had a huge blow up over 7-5 versus 7-4. Instead, it's ace, six, three. It's top pair for Evan Scott, and it's a set of sixes for Vicky Corrin. Well, we know Scott's just going to fold. <laughs> He's not folding top pair. Not to a single bet. He folded an over pair. That's better than top pair. Eight thousand. There you go. He heard that you wanted him to check raise, Joe. 
He can't check raise because he's in position, but he is going to re-raise. Oh, wow. A very quick shove from Vicky, enough to put Evan Scott all in. I actually don't blame Vicky at all here. I think other situations, this might be a mistake. Somebody will just like snap fold and not so Why great top pair, so but. Quickly? Sorry? Why did you go all in so quickly? Oh, that's a good question. Because uh, if I didn't do it quickly, I might think better of it. I want to think better of it now. No, I'm, I'm glad the chips are there. I can imagine just doing something else and regretting it later. Like That's a bit creepy. This is so good. This is like out of a movie good. All right, I'll call. Oh! Ah. He's got 3% equity? Yes, you are in big trouble. He will not be getting off scot free. Well, now picks up additional outs. Nah. Yeah, I'm not sure luck played much of a factor in that hand. Look at Nico, though. Does he look like the type of guy that would bring runner runner Broadway? <laughs> they all look like that guy. I know this is going to sound terrible. I'm a little rusty. What were the additional outs? I was mentally, I was sweating. Um, I didn't have time to worry. Ace or a three? For a full house. You don't want those ones anyway. Do you? I know the A's, but wouldn't the th three's <laughs> full of six? <laughs> wouldn't Vicky still have sixes full of three? Oh, you're right. Sorry. So you're right. You're right. Oh, yes, absolutely. Could I have a cup of tea, please? <laughs> tea with milk and sugar. I love the fact that we got to see Vicky ordering tea. Oh, Okay, blind v blind, unraised pre, seven deuce versus five three. I'm here for it. <laughs> I miss Vicky so much. Of course, it was good old fashioned English breakfast tea that Vicky was drinking on her path to victory in the London EPT in 2006. Yes, she consumed too much red wine before that and needed to sober up, but that detail is not important. He's just on the war path right now. Bottom pair is in big trouble. Yeah. Have some of that. This is the difference between a two time runner up and a two time champion. Oh, what a line. I mean, it happened to me before that I flopped middle set, but I never got it. Yeah. Yeah. Just queen nine. mowing down the Not competition. When it's queen nine, I'll show you, but it won't be. I really be. want to see you flip up queen nine sometime today. Now. I'm not playing queen nine again Angry. today. Okay, well, we're joining this hand late. It's Kev McPhee versus Ricky Wilmot. Ace three versus King nine. Ricky Wilmot win this hand. Making easy money today. Ben coming by with this last line. There's absolutely no reason this. I don't even need to know what happened before this. No, Ricky. Ricky, no. I'm dead. I'm dead. The ready? Ricky getting a little too stinky. Good pop for me, I guess. There's not really much tension here, and I'm not really sure why we're drawing it out, but there we go. Unlucky Ricky Wilmot. Tell us, make people do some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. I said the camera make people just like some crazy stuff. That's what I said. I like the camera, man. That's really interesting. Fair point. Kevin, now I'm getting his screen name. I'm a Luxek. 
Must be nice to be you. That's how we win APTs, boys and girls. Must be nice to be the both of you. I've got a really good idea for a TV show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Let's hear it. It's just me. It's just literally just you. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Just Jeff living my life, you know? Okay, but talk me through the average episode. Roll credits. There's Kevin. What's happening? <laughs> Um, is he like is the winning Moore loads show? of money and traveling around the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. You write a proposal. Is it a comedy show? I think it would be a tragedy. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to end that way. Some strong foreshadowing. Like it starts fun and then goes really dark. It goes really, really dark. Yeah. It culminates in a really unnecessary part in Berlin in 2012. <laughs> Hello, Daniela Vesco. Two previous EPT caches, hoping to score his third. Now's your chance to get the money in the next kind of 10 minutes. And with the blinds at 200, 400, this is roughly midway through the day. So I think we're going to be hitting the break soon. Is it bugging anyone else that Selena's got that patch on her skin? I mean, peeling that off cannot be a pleasant experience. Actually, I've I've handled those patches. They're rubbish. They barely stick on. So she's probably struggling to even keep it there. It's probably falling off all the time. There was one brand of patches that if you washed your shirt without taking it off, the patch would be permanently stuck to it. <laughs> Oh, uh, Uncle Jones, he says, I always thought they were embroidered. The only person with an embroidered PokerStars patch was Pierre Neville, and he did it himself. Here we go, guys. Like a quass. But, Joe, it is always coming seven. <laughs> and Vicky now bets 1K. I saw my opponent caught their seven here. I'd fly across the room. And Fabian does not improve on the river. Vicky has a lock on this. Near enough four and a half K in the middle. She bets two K. Getting a little spicy, some hot quass. Oh, cheeky river raise. Love it. Turns the deuces into a bluff. This guy's going to go places. This guy's going to win super high roller events. <laughs> wow, gets called. Good call, Vicky. Her deuces. Sorry, I don't mean to slow down. Just unstoppable today. I like the raise, Fabian. You've got to respect the call. I don't think he does. I think that call is going to stay with him like an albacross around his neck. So midway through day 1A of this EPT London event from September of 2010. Thomas Bichon from France is the biggest stack with fellow Frenchman Arnaud Matern second in chips. Vicky is a top five stack. And of course, we'll continue the day 1A action in just a moment with a new feature table, more players that we can meet. I mean, my view, Joe, is that there are pros and cons to covering day one. And overall, I think that ultimately there are more cons. And we saw that when a few years later we got to go to the events and stream the day ones. And, I mean, it's even harder when you don't have the cards up and when you're seeing every single hand. They're just too inconsequential. I mean, you're looking at what would that be about kind of six to seven hours of poker and they've managed to pick out the, the, the best hands there. 
but that's from two different tables, and we saw that that was working out like one or at most two hands per level. I, I'm a fan of of the early coverage uh, because I prefer multi way action to short handed. Um, and also, I think that, and again, this is you're kind of rolling the dice here with poker tournaments. Is that the hands may be inconsequential, but I think there's a little bit more camaraderie at the table, a little bit more chat, people getting to know each other. They know the hands are uh, slightly less consequential, so they're a little bit more relaxed. Uh, they're happy to be there, that sort of thing, and they're not quite as entrenched in the seriousness of it just yet. Yes, the quans that you uh suggested do exist i do still like the early coverage though yeah i think i'd feel differently about it if i didn't know what's coming up which is a huge void a huge chasm but anyway <laughs> we continue in linear fashion for the time being we continue with day 1a and uh, as referenced we have got a new feature table for your viewing pleasure uh, headlined by someone who we saw at the tail end of season six he won EPT Snowfest and he made a deep run in EPT San Remo. Alan Becker. Oh, yeah. Back to Becker. Yeah. <laughs> Ivan Demidov, World Series of Poker runner up. This guy will have success in Barcelona in a few years. Kimo Kirko from Finland. is re-raised with pocket tens. How much you playing? Is it three or four of the adults? Three. Three, okay. Alan deciding how to respond to this three bet. Alan. By the way, for those of you new to the whole format of EPT Retro, yes, we're watching poker from 10 years ago. Yes, we're watching old TV shows, but the commentary is new and the commentary is live. We are with you. Real time. 13 minutes past eight Central European time right now. Now, depending on history and dynamic and, you know, what you know of this player, I don't hate folding with ace queen. I don't really hate any of the options. Um, Re-raising is probably my least favorite, but as you can see in this particular situation, it's not terrible. He's putting his opponent to a decision for all of his chips. And Kimo is making the call because Kimo is our own player. And looks like Karko has called. So we are going to be flipping. We are off to the races. <laughs> what is that thinking? Like Inception versus Winter's Bone, one of these two things from 2010 has a slight mathematical advantage. Oh, that's a good one. If you win this hand, we'll be clear. We won't even be able to deal. No, we're yeah. down seven hands. I'm going to bank it? Yeah, definitely. Good. The and the river? Yeah. Oh, so I'm going to sweat. <laughs> you don't make it too easy. It's more fun. <laughs> yeah. As long as I'm going to hit. squeezed in like four of those. <laughs> there is an ace on the flop. On the river. Oh, so I'm going to bank again. Yeah, yeah. What about the turn? No turn? No, no, no. Oh, that's good. Just, just a blank of five or something. <laughs> okay. Close. And the queen now? Yeah. Oh, 10 <laughs> on the river. <laughs> and Kimo Koko doubles up through Alan Becker. <laughs> Taking it like a champ. Only happens at three tables. That's why I never win. Yeah, probably. Alan Becker has now relocated to Sweden. I can confirm he is actually Danish. 
Uh, this chap very much from the United States of America, Frank Casella. <coughs> oh, that's awesome. Love Frank. Raises here to 16.50 with a six of diamonds. Future World Series of Poker Player of the Year, I believe. Alan Becker is back to being Danish. Ooh, that was unnecessary. <laughs> is going to lead. Man, I'd be pretty tempted to raise this lead. Aha! Uh -huh. Yep. Casella makes it 6,000. You've got a draw, but it's not really a great draw. You really only want to hit one end of the straight at this point. Perfectly happy to win it. I don't think anybody really expects to win with the raise there and are likely going to double barrel most of the time. Okay, so the 10 high straight for Alan Becker as Casella pairs his six on the turn. Bet twice, though. Well done. Good fold. Alan Becker in Becker to Becker hands. Felt like you were steaming. Loses one, wins the other. You did? I wish you would have re-raised on the flop. We would have got it all in. I must don't know if he's serious. You can say that much. I still wish we'd have got it all in on the flop. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'd like to steal another one from me. Okay, he's not serious. So I think we're still at the 300-600 blind level. That is ace-queen for Julien Bracard. I would put a considerable amount of money on a situation where I asked Joe to name all former members of Team Pokestars Pro and him being unable to remember or even know about Julian Bracard. I mean, I would have forgotten some way more obvious people than Julian Bracard. <laughs> <laughs> that is some nominative determinism right there. The word card is in his name. Frank Casella has called with ace eight of clubs. And it looks like the blinds have folded. We are heads up to the flop, which is ace five four. Casella with kicker problems. Team Pro! And you get a Team Pro sponsorship, and you get a Team Pro sponsorship. 2,875 called by Casella. Oh! Who pairs his eight on the turn, the dead man's hand. And two pair, obviously good, good to improve, but three diamonds. Straight cards. And when somebody double barrels, I think you know you can get some value out of better aces. There's the raise. sizable raise as well and oh, that no. is a questionable all then i guess you got the queen of diamonds but i call 
I mean, it's weird because, I mean, the bat is, the raise is for half your stack. But that turn card's pretty bad. Now, you may not be able to put your opponent on AC. I don't know what position Frank called in. I don't remember, but... Like, if they're calling with 6-7, they got there. If they're calling with diamonds, they got there. And looks like Bricard is the at-risk player here and will need to improve on the river, which he does not. So that is the elimination of Julian Bricard. Would you say that river was a brick card? <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't be liking that joke as much as I do. <laughs> Not a lot to dodge there. There's a lot there. Was it the eight on the turn? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I mean... Oh, you know, you've tickled me. Yeah, All he had to hit was a queen or a diamond. Yeah, I know. So, we have a new chip leader. Congratulations to that guy. Because Thomas Bichon is now second in chips. Shannon Shaw, you who's at our feature table, is in the top 10. Uh, by the way, the venue for this event, the Hilton Metropole Hotel on London's Edgware Road, just down the road from the Grosvenor Victoria Casino, the Vic. It was running under the Vic's license, and the cash games were down the road. Yeah. So we've got Alan Becker opening with Ace Queen and Ivan Demidov. Thinking about getting involved with Queen Jack. Good hashtag fake fact from Carl Gordon Stanley. Frank Casella played Skeletor in the Masters of the Universe film. And Demidov has re-raised three bets to 4K. Shannon Shaw folds. Big blinds out. It's back on Becker. Was it Ace Queen the hand he went bananas with a few seconds ago? Well, he got involved in a ridiculously big flip with Ace Queen, yes. Here it is a case of the nation of domination. Alan. Calls the re-raise. And the flop is ace, king, five. Top pair for Becker and the gut shot for Demidov. Backdoor clubs working for him as well. Cool. Well, I'm never folding now. This is a really weird lead. Like, I kind of feel like if your opponent. Like, you got to give your opponent a chance to continuation bet, which they should be doing when they re-raise your pre-flop. So you're either betting into, I mean, it goes without saying, you're betting into a worse hand or a better hand, but yeah, you can just bet into a worse hand and they fold. Oh, we got a CFO, the poker tourist joining us. Complaining about the fact that you couldn't rail this feature table because of the daft new set. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid the wine bar was a private venue. I'm going to watch it on TV. On TV uh, Steve, I'm not sure if you're here at the start of the stream, but it was Joe Stapleton's fault. It was all because of the big game. Pocket sevens. And we get a raise to 2,000 from Shannon Shaw. Alan Becker calling with pocket fives. It's amazing that Sivo is complaining that you couldn't rail the the action live. He's like the one person that likes watching live poker in person. How much are you playing, Alan? Uh, I have about 25 before the hand, I think. Pocket nines here for Lanamark. The best hand. 
19. But it's a fold. And instead, it's Jason Gray who gets involved out of the big blind with Ace Jack. We have a King 10 6 flop. And Gray has pretty solid equity with two live cards and a gut shot. Shaw still ahead with sevens. Yeah, and a board that neither of these other two players should be that crazy about. Raise on the flop, wins in the pot. Pretty cool. And Raymond Wu is coming to the feature table. Wu Wu! <laughs> we'll give him 10 in. <laughs> like the previous. the previous season, he made the final table of this event, cashed out in seventh place. Cool as a woocumber. Yeah. Pocket eights. And Alan is going to raise to 1800. <laughs> this dude's been involved in a lot of hands. Thank you. I mean, I remember very clearly he was a very entertaining player to watch. Not sure what happened to Alan Becker, but I really enjoyed watching his victory in Snowfest. I enjoyed his deep run in San Remo. Enjoyed watching some of these hands from London. strong a little bit. You just keep doing it to me. Yeah, he does. It feels personal sometimes, and sometimes it's just because they keep having a hand. I made the wrong decision every time so far. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. What's the right decision now? I can't tell you that. So you had a really bad hand last time? Yeah. Because he doesn't know. Total bluff. It's a big bluff. I get why Alan Becker would fold the snowmen's there. Num num. Especially when you've got Demidov to worry about behind you. I don't think I've ever folded a pocket pair pre-flop for anything less than all in. Yeah, and how's it working out for you, Joe? How are your results these days? Uh, really... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Alan's gone back to being Swedish again. <laughs> so 213 players remaining on day 1A. 400, 800 blind level. And we join this hand on the flop. It is Shannon Shaw versus Raymond Wu. It is a blind v blind situation. And it is top pair for Wu. Well, this isn't gonna work. And Shannon Short drawing dead on the turn. Trip aces for Raymond Wu. Shannon's just giving up entirely now, right? I don't know. Like, maybe Raymond calls him with a five. Pretty tough to get a queen to fold. Even a five, I'd say, when the second ace peels off on turn. And obviously, an ace is not folding. Not sure where 
what better hands are holding. King high. King high to fold. Maybe a five. Pocket fours. Seven thousand one hundred called by Raymond Wu, and a significant pot. Ah, we're going to play a hand from Mr. Casella's point of view. Sweat with Frank. It's so weird. I was just tweeting with him this morning. At him? I don't know. With him? At him? To him? We were tweeting. And you had no idea that you were actually going to see him in action in this event from 10 years ago? None whatsoever. That, my friend is a glitch in the matrix. It was pretty glitchy. So it's Kimo Kirko with the decision here. The raise is to 2,200. And that is a flat from the fin. Casella's hand, King Jack of clubs, the crunchiest version of Kojak. When I have this hand and I raise and I get one color, then I want like five colors. <laughs> well, it is a king high flop. Red rather than black cards. Oh, nice C bet here. 2,500, 2,700. Ooh, went big. 3,800. And a reasonably quick call from Kirko. I gotta start paying attention to what position these chaps are calling from. I mean, that doesn't look like it's changed anything. We've got nearly 14K in the middle, and here's a second barrel from Casella, 6,100. Kirko doesn't look super happy. The eight's unlikely to have improved him. Holes. Now you start wondering, like, what hands can call me three times? Well, Casella slows down now, checks, has kings and fours with a jack kicker. King Queen are you up against here? I mean, best case scenario, you're up against, like, King Ten. Yeah. Or you're up against diamonds, right? It could be on a diamond draw. Kirko's going to have to bet the diamond draw. How this much is going to be a really tough spot. Yeah, well, we've got a pot of 26K. The bet is 11,600. This is where Curiosity gets the better of me, and I call. I'm with you, Frank, yeah. but let's see what Kirko turns over. Ace King. Wow, he flatted Ace King Pre. Nicely played. I really think Good that, downing. yeah, it's so what close there. Call, like, there, it feels like there's yeah, just as many missed draws, that fire, uh, and an, enough kings you're beating versus kings you're losing to, because yeah, king queen can play it like that, ace king can play it a little slow yeah. like that. Yeah. Huh? It's so close. Yeah. yeah I think I'm going to say that was a good sweat with hand. That was a good sweat with hand. I need a walk. What did you say? I need a walk. Nope. We've got Jason Gray back in action. Raising here with 5 4 of clubs. 
Queen Deuce of Clubs for Shannon Shaw. That bet? 2,100. Raises to 6,100. And now we got pocket tens for Alan Becker. And by far the best of it, despite this action. All in, and Shannon Shaw priced in, forced to make the call with Queen Deuce. Why couldn't you have a real hand, like eights or something? Oh, eights is going to hit nines. <laughs> sure. It's going to come something funky, like three, four, five, six. Sorry in advance. It's OK. <laughs> Are we going to get something funky? I like funkiness. <laughs> yeah. 10, 7, 9. That is top set for Becca. 93% favorite. Oh, this is going to be runner, runner spade, isn't it? <laughs> no. No. At least I can lose. That's true. Shannon Short drawing to a chop. You did? Oh, man, it is a spade. It is a chop pot, and you know what they say. Everyone loves a chop pot. You say you fought two spades? Yeah. So did I. Really? Wow. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Hold on. I'm bizarre. Huh? There's 13 spades, four of them are folded, nine it's left. Nico, you can do, Five you can of the that. remaining. It's a machine. Nine Line spades. Up. All those burn cards are probably spades yeah, too. Probably, yeah. <laughs> 11 spades in a row. Before we take too much credit for that chop pot performance, I would say it's a lot easier when I'm hosting the stream and we only have to worry about one person being in a different yeah. part of the world. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll be able to recreate it also. Uh, yes, Poppy QX. He did say it was going to be funky, and it was funky. Funkiness confirmed. How have we gone this whole show with no one having aces? Well, we do have aces now. We've seen the opening raise from Rankers with 10-8 off. Alan Becker. Elects to re-raise three bets to 7,700. Uh-oh. And Frank Casella with ace-queen. Oh, Francis. It was not a sound clip, it was a live performance, honestly. Not only do we not practice it, but like, I didn't even, I forgot it was even a thing till it happened. I was like, oh wait, we do something here. Correct. Um, this is how much respect I get when I wait. This is looking I'm getting a while for a while, ain't that? Interesting, as Casella re-raises with the ace-queen, Kimo Koko now with jacks. I think it's a fold, and it is a fold. Thank you. And here we go, Alan Becker all in and way ahead. Yeah, I understand. I'm doing good with ace-queen today. Probably not going to continue. Maybe. <laughs> hey, we saw funkiness on the last hand. Hearts not a factor. The ace no of hearts yeah, I rests okay. with right, Allen. You just don't want to see a jack or a ten. With <coughs> a percent of equity. <laughs> You're in good shape now. Yeah. Even better than the tens. It is. I needed to just go 888 eight, eight all the way across. <laughs> yeah. We could have tied with quad eight. We see Becca win with aces. And yes, baby dog, if you've listened 
to the most recent episode of the Poker in the Years podcast, you will know that Joe and I made a discovery about the phrase American Airlines, that it was actually used in a movie back in 2003. This little known poker film called Shade invented that phrase. So we give them all the credit, give them all the respect, and we're moving on. 161 players remaining as day 1A of this London EPT from season seven draws to a close. Blind still 500 and 1,000. Yes, that's right, we do still have chip in a chair. Joe created that back in 2015. That is all us. Still got the snowmen's. Still got always coming seven. Still plenty of dumb memes for us to troll out on a regular basis. Some that have yet to be invented. Gray has opened with ace-queen, flattered by Wu with king-jack. 10-5 for Shannon Shaw. He does like his funkiness, doesn't he? Like this one. Ship to shore radio, ship to shore radio. Don't do it. Don't do it, Shannon. You think this isn't going to work? You would be correct. <laughs> ship to shore, got shipped on. Jason Gray all in for 56k. Um, whoops. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just going to make it look like I have a tough decision here and then uh, look back at my cards. Fold 10-5 and let's have another hand, please. Look, if you're going to have a three bet fold range, 10-5 is fine to do the we fold part with. One more. Yeah. So cool. Last hand of the day, I believe. Day 1A is almost in the books. No, not on the last hand. Not ace five. Oh, thank you. Nope, not on the last hand. <laughs> oh, I love that little chuckle like that. I can safely fold that and bag my chips. Raymond Wu, what you gonna do? He's going to fold. Uh -huh. Shannon nice. has a legitimate hand, ace jack, and is going to raise to 2,500. Surely this last hand can't be a raise and take it. It won't be raise and take it. And don't call me Shirley. Alan Becker has the same hand, ace jack. 96% chance of a chop, assuming that it's just these two in the pot. set a high standard with our previous performance. That uh -oh. being said, this might not be a chop. Ace, King, 10, all spades. The royal flush draw for Shannon Shaw. We know this dealer likes fine in spades. This qualify as a monster draw, James Hardigan? I'll allow it. Watch it come brick, brick. <laughs> Not a brick. Yeah, but. And here's the straight for both players. Short still with the redraw. Free rolling.
Alan. <laughs> wow, he, he responded immediately. He heard you. He'd forgotten it was his go. Long time to get to the inevitable. I'll tell you what, we had better see the Queen of Spades on the river. Because this we hand is taking up a lot of this show. Jack of spades, but I can't go. You got the Jack of Spades? The four of clubs. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Chop it up. I don't like this, but not with, with all the spades coming against you. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, he deserves a chop. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. You mean that? <laughs> he does deserve a chop. Unbelievable. Well, it's the five of diamonds. This is going to be a chop pot. And you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop, chop pot. pot. I didn't like the I feel like we had nowhere to go but down there. Yeah, we set the bar too high on the first one. Dan kind of. So with day 1A drawing to a close, we see it's John O'Shea from Ireland who's the biggest stack. 172,000 million names in the top 10. Michelle Abacassis, Barry Shulman, and we are going to continue our coverage of this event with day 1B because that's how we are going to roll. It does seem weird, Joe, that when we did EPT Retro initially, it was born of circumstance. It was born of the situation we found ourselves back in the spring, hastily thrown together. We had a bit more time to think about this one, but it's not because of where we're at now. We always said, by the way, that we were going to see it through to the end of season seven. And Retro was meant to continue into July, but then Stadium Series came along and then WCOOP came along. So, you know, a new poker original content was obviously going to take priority. We always plan to bring this back and now seem the right time to do it because of course EPT Online is on the horizon and we're going to segue straight into those streams next week. But it does seem weird that EPT Retro was designed as entertainment and as a distraction in people's time of need. And here we are again in the month of November. And on both sides of the Atlantic, there's various stuff going on right now, which means we need this. We want that distraction. We want that entertainment. We want that diversion. So we are here for you. And just a reminder, we are going to have six editions of EPT Retro before EPT Line Online kicks off. So we're here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of this week. We're here Monday, Tuesday of next week, and then Wednesday of next week is when we kick off EPT Online. I'm really quite excited about this, Joe. We've seen a lot of big online series this year, and we've had the advantage of streaming some of those with our Scoop Final Table replays, our live cards up coverage of Stadium Series, our live cards up coverage of WCOOP. I think it's worth pointing out that they have been talking about the prospect of an online version of an EPT series for some time, now it makes sense to do it more than ever. It's finally here, replicating the schedule of an actual EPT festival. And we get to stream the 10K high roller, the 25K super high roller, and the 5K main event. And we're getting the band back together. Maria, Sam, Griffin. Should be a fun six days of coverage. Did you say there's going to be a $25,000 online poker tournament? Correct. Well, that is fantastic. We had one during WCOOP. We're going to have one during EPT Online as well. There is also the 1K Arena Championship because, of course, the events will be played in the PokerStars Arena at three days of main event coverage, including our world-famous bubble coverage. So just to be clear, EPT Online coverage from the 11th through to the 12th, 13th. Then again, we take the break for the weekend, picking things up on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's the 16th, 17th, and 18th of November with our main event coverage. Should be a lot of fun. And what better way to prepare for that? What better warm-up act, if you like, than six days of EPT Retro, some actual live poker played back in 2010, including the London leg of the tour from the autumn of 2010. We've had day 1A, and of course, every single EPT main event has two starting flights. The very next day, 24 hours later, we have 
day 1B. And we are about to say hello to one of the biggest names in poker. Has been for many a decade, still is today. Say hello, ladies and gentlemen, to Daniel Negrianu as he takes his seat at our feature table for day 1B. 509 players rocking up for the second of these two starting flights. I thought you were going to say Julian Bricard, but obviously he already played day 1A. And at this point, me first. It's a okay. freeze out. I'm in. So Negranu with King Queen raises. Shimoni Shalomi with Queen 10 here, flats. Awesome. awesome and man. we're at the first blind level, 5100 once again. It's a bit weird to begin at the beginning again, but that's how it works. And we've got two other players in this hand, Farzad Bonyadi and Christopher Chow. Farzad Bonyadi is one of my all-time favorite poker player names. So glad to see him. What a flop for Negrani. So amazing. Too hard. Yeah, top pair in a flush draw. That is just the dream flop. 83% of the equity four handed. If you had a pretty hand right now, take, what would you think? Take it, Chief. No, no, really. What would you think it would be? Pretty hand. King with two hearts. What, what is a pretty hand? Two threes. <laughs> yeah, two threes. Here, that's one card. Pretty hand. Pretty flop. Take it, Thief. Thief? Thief. You laid down Ace King? Is that what you're claiming? <laughs> no. <laughs> you're close, though. What a good start. It's a good thing there's tape on that head, otherwise we might know what brand it is. Dario Minieri coming to the feature table. This table's huge, huh? <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, Dario, did he get, oh. What's that? It's 10 minutes. Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. 10 today and then eight tomorrow? No, nine tomorrow. Nine tomorrow. Okay, here's a hand you may have seen before. Shlomi opens to 475 with pocket kings. Pocket sixes for Fazzo Bonyadi. Bonyadi. Flats. Negranu on the button has 10 9 of diamonds. Right in Negranu's wheelhouse, especially for this era. Legendary hand, says Wolfie Spirit. Very stoic over there. Nope, he's out. Yeah, we're going three way to the flop. Nine, five, four. Top pair for Negranu. Shlomi, 70% favorite with an over pair to the board. Shlomi the money. That's pretty much full pop. Yeah, probably not the best in most situations, but luckily someone else has top pair here. Someone who hates folding. But some folks would even fold 10-9 to a full pot bet in this type of situation. Luckily for Shlomi, not Daniel Negreanu. Queen of hearts on the turn. Shlomi now almost a nine to one favorite. Bets again, smaller this time compared to the pot. The smaller size of this bet would make me a little bit suspicious. Daniel Daniel's calls again. Eight of, Eight of clubs on the river. So Shlomi raise pre. Bet flop. Bet turn. Bet's river. 3k into nearly 12k. <sighs> so small. Six, seven got there. And Daniel raises. 12,800. Wow. Yeah, 
aces or kings. Can I say that, or is that illegal? Heads up. I can say what he has, but not what I have. Okay. I'm thinking aces or kings. <laughs> Negranu gun to Negranu. What a freaking read. How do you put someone on aces <laughs> or kings here and then get them to one? fold it? Show all? No. Okay. okay. I can show one? I can show one if I want to? I don't feel like it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I don't have a good one to show. What a move. Classic you kind of hate Daniel to Nagano. see it, right? Because Daniel's so successful, so confident. <laughs> but also, you it's love to see good, it at right? the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that's what I thought he had, but not that I could beat it. <laughs> Bonyardi confirming that kings were still good there. Ah, oh, classic hand. And again, one of the pros to covering the early days of an EPT. Dario Minieri raises here with ace-queen, gets called by Bonyadi on the button with 10-9 of diamonds. Christopher Chow is here as well. And what a flop for Chow. Top pair and the heart draw. Unluckily for him, Farzad Bonyadi has flopped the straight. Bets it 800. Chow calls. Minieri gets out of the way. Heads up to the turn. Two pair now for Chow. Wow. Top two, second nut flush draw, but still losing to Bonyadi straight. A weird, weird spot you were in. Uh -huh. that hand. I know. I'm ahead of 18. Such a weird spot. 17 people call behind, and he makes a squeeze, and I call, and it's like, what the hell? Hard to figure out. I can't with all those people behind. I mean, I don't know. I guess I could, but. Second barrel of 1,600, and Chow raises, clicks it, makes it 3,200. And a re-raise from Bonyadi to 11,000. Well, it's all kicking off here. And remember, this is the first blind level. Bonyardi's re-raise is more than one-third starting stack. Chow calls, and this hand is going to the river. And Chow's going to need to see a king, a jack, or a heart. It is the four of clubs on the river. Bonyardi's straight is still good. I mean, Chow flopped so well. Turned huge, but is now bricked out on the river. And Bonyadi gets the rest in. 16,500. Such a frustrating spot to have to fold. I don't, I mean, I don't know that you can, but. Are you good enough to make this fold, James? No. Good fold, Mr. Oh, Chow. Man. Hollywood now. What? Oh, you, you've learned a lot from those guys in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was very good. I was I was believing the whole thing. The whole move, everything was very good. I was gonna give you a standing ovation. <laughs> what did I do? No, oh, I was just you were thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. In my mind, I'm thinking. You have the nuts. I'm thinking. <laughs> and you're thinking. Mm, it was cute. I liked it. 
I really Not far pay off. To you. Yeah. <laughs> like, Shut up, Daniel. Farza Bonyadi, table chip leader. That one really short. Remember, this is still the first level. 5,100 blinds. <laughs> Poor old Shlomi. He's not going to play any other hands today. He's just going to hope to fold his way to day two. You're burnt. Julian Levine opens with deuces. Raises to 350. Action round to Christopher Chow, who's got King Jack again. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> Negranu in on the button with ace four of hearts. Minieri with ace jack in the big blind. Calls. We are going four way to the flop. Neve says watching this stuff makes me miss playing live so much. One day, Neve. One day. Oh, wow. Jack, Jack, eight trips for Minieri and Chow. Chow out kicked. I mean, you could continue with deuces here. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, but... Uh, I mean, I hate it because I can see all the cards. If everyone has king-queen, they might fold. <laughs> Chow calls. Negranu folds. I can't believe Chow's about to get jacked off out of this tournament. I mean, you can't make two amazing folds. One. That's all you're going to get from me. <laughs> One. One kind of tight fold. If you're lucky. On a good day. Yeah. Yeah, no. Maximum. <laughs> fold not guaranteed. Um, so it's a race to 3,875. And Chell lays it down. He just folded what? trip jacks there. Not just trip jacks, but like the second nut trip jacks, right? Um, Losing to jack eight and ace jack. I mean, pocket eights also. Again, it's so hard to be objective when you can see all the cards. Is that a good fold? <sighs> no. Yeah, that's what, especially from a player like Minieri, right? With his reputation? It can't be, yeah. Unless you've got some kind of blinding Oreo cookie style tell from Dario Minieri. Yeah. I mean, you're thinking, oh, Dario Minieri's raising there. He must have Jack 8, Pocket 8's Ace Jack. Mr. Chow. Even against a guy or a girl with a tight reputation, you're going to go, maybe they have Queen Jack. Yeah. So these are the chip leaders on day 1B. Juan Maceras leads the field at this moment in time. Eric Baldwin and Freddie D both in the top five. And Chow's back in action with pocket nines, raises to 400. I love the fact they've muted Negrani's microphone. <laughs> Daniel was talking about something irrelevant during this hand and was destroying the tension. So we muted him. But you can still hear him. I mean, he's not going to fold nines to the re-raise from in the area, is he? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, Mr. Chow, this one. This is the time. This is your time. 
Next one will be your time. But again, you see, I'm not hating that flop with pocket nines, and I'm probably calling at least one bet. Especially against Minieri. Here's the reason I might not call once against Minieri. He's folded again! This guy is unreal. Mr. Chow, he makes a fold. That move again, it was a fold. Um, I... Against Dario, like, some players you can call there with nines and then they shut down, like, afraid you have a king. Dario's not likely to shut down against you, so I don't mind just folding their nines right away. But also, if you're, like, calling with nines to fold every time you don't flop a set, like, you can't really do that either. So Negreanu's open with threes. Minieri has re-raised with kings. Actually. None of those folds have been incorrect, though, right? Like, so no, far, he's, he's been made, behind every time. Absolutely. Yeah. He's made three 100% correct folds. Uh, this is Jerome Guillemel, who has re-raised with ace-queen. Kings for Chow. Oh my goodness, he just calls? I've liked his tight play so far. I don't love just calling and maybe going three ways to the flop yeah um also again i'm going to emphasize the fact that these are the early levels of day 1b and i know it's a cliche but like all good cliches there's an element of truth you cannot win the tournament you can only lose at this point that being said kings bro So Minieri's re-raise gets rid of ace-queen. No, no, Chow. You're not folding kings here. <laughs> I'm not worried about him folding kings, though. Maybe I should be. But I am worried about him just calling and then folding to an ace-high flop. Like, I like to get it all in pre-flop with kings, so that way I can't fold incorrectly when it comes ace high. Oh, no. <laughs> no. It's just folded kings. What? Oh, my God. All right. Oh, Mr. Chow. <clears throat> um, there was a comment earlier on asking about why the graphics are so fuzzy. Hey, guys, remember standard definition? No. You know how, like, before 4K, there was HD? Well, before that, there was SD. It was rubbish. And this was the last season of the EPT that was still shot standard def. Noctis says, I'm starting to wonder if he knows what the hand rankings are. <laughs> I was trying to think of what I was trying to represent, and that's one of the hands I could have represented. Shlomi's like, I'm not raising any more hands. I'm just going to call here with 7-6. Chow in with Jack-9. Negrana with Jack-7. And we've also so got John Hall and Dario Minieri. We are going five way to the flop. How hard does Chow have to hit a board to not fold it? Can you imagine if he now blasts off with Jack-9 on an ace-ace-10 board? I mean, that's a pretty common story. We see people play super tight, and then we see them get it all in in, like, very strange situations later. Who does actually have the best hand right now? It's Dario with a pair of tens, right? Dario bet. Now that's... A little Italian thief. <laughs> How do you say thief in Italian? Ladro. Dar what? Ladro. Dario? Ladro. Dario? Dario. 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 D
Ladro. Ladro, just like Dario. The, the, yeah, there are <laughs> three <laughs> same letters of my name. Yeah. <laughs> there there might be a <laughs> Dario. <laughs> Please, stop. Somebody Dario'd my purse. Show you the other one with Yeah, Lario Dario. <laughs> Don't mess with Dario, he's such a Lario. <laughs> the L with the E. <laughs> I didn't notice that. <laughs> Dario the Lario. That's a good nickname for you. Dario the Ladro, yeah. Dario, Lario, Minieri. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Hello, guys. Tobias Reinkemeyer taking a seat alongside okay. Negranu. We're doing open. To open to three. You can't call. Someone three. There's a flat, a four, five. And then a decision is made. Okay? You can handle that. I know. That's right up your alley. Call me, Toby. So I have to wait I've for watched you play. Yeah. Like yeah, that's one way to get good. Watch the EPTs and stuff, right? You learn stuff. I've seen this guy before. What's that? What would Tobias do? Okay, I've seen him make this exact play before on TV. <laughs> so Negrani flats the raise. Right? Yeah, it's called the raise. He raised. I can't limp. That is a limp. Guys, I know it's not cool. I know it's out of style. I know it makes me basic. I love Daniel Shtick. I still love it. I'm embarrassed to admit it. Well, we've got a complication here. Because Dario Minieri has elected to squeeze with ace three on the button. Action back on Bonyadi, who started this with tens. Calls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll go for it. 18.50. Oops. Sorry. I think Tobias would do the same thing. <laughs> Three-way action. And an ace, 10, 6 oh. flop with two clubs. It is top pair and the flush draw for Negrano. It is a set of 10s for Farzad Bonyadi. Uh, funnily enough, Dario Minieri has zero equity. Zero. Point zero. He's falling for it. He's oh. getting double trapped. Oh, chips into the abyss. Action, everybody repping pretty strong. What do you totally do here? Down. In Daniel's situation, Joe, Minieri's opened, Bonyadi's raised, Negrano flats. I think I, I like flatting a lot there. Um, you know, when you get raised there, you probably don't have the best hand. When you call, you can maybe get someone to call behind because when you make your hand, right, you're going to have the nuts. Yeah. So Dario folds anyway. Well, there is the flush for Negrano, and now is a four-to-one favorite with one card to come. I think showing a little bit of his fear of this club with this bat. Thirteen thousand, and that's all of it. Negranu says all in, and he's got Bonyadi covered. I think you gotta let this go. 
There's some hands you're doing okay against. But it's hard for Daniel to have two pair here with a club. Is Daniel doing this with Ace King with a club, maybe? Mm. Really tough for Daniel to have a better set, obviously. Probably not going to have 8 9. A quarter two of them in his cards. And that's uh. Yeah. Well, Yardi calls oh, yeah, and needs the board to pair. Had that was set there, I guess. Once you bet it, you couldn't throw it away. And uh, he's checked off the back if he has the board. Daniel has not much. I have a shot. Huh? I still have a shot. No, oh, yeah, I mean, it's not over. <laughs> There's plenty of sevens. I can play short chips anyway. <laughs> you don't like playing short stack? No. Okay, neither do I. <laughs> so. And let's see the river card. And the board does not pair. Negrani's flush holds, and Farzad Bonyadi is eliminated. Oh well, I'll promise to do something good with your chips. I yeah. <laughs> that like, I don't care. seem like he had the three tens, right? Negrani becomes chip hand. leader. Nice little run there. Thirteen eggs. Blinds one hundred. Kid poker. Poor old Shlomi. Still reeling from that king's hand. Raises here with Queen Jack to four hundred and fifty. Oh, that's a re-raise, James. Um. Yeah. I think some of the graphics in this show leave a bit to be desired. Guimir calls with sixes. Chow with ace queen calls. Ryan Kamaya with jack ten. Come on. Calls. And now we got Daniel Negreanu in the big blind. Any two. Ten nine. Five players going to the flop. Queen, Jack, five. So, top, top for Chow, but Shlomi with top two. Let's see if Chow's spidey sense gets him out of another sticky situation. Why couldn't it have been Queen, Jack, six? That would have just maybe been the biggest train wreck hand of all time. Yeah. Who's folding? Oh, the sixes are. <laughs> Chow calls. Reinkemeyer folds. Negranu open-ended. And if I know that Chow is one of these players and that Chow is likely to fold, and that only leaves one other player, I think a raise is certainly possible. Daniel calls. Three players. Daniel calls. Blank on the turn, and Shlomi now a 70% favorite. Shlomi, don't play that. Shlomi. Now what Daniel needs to do is make a straight against Shlomi because Shlomi will never fold to him ever again. This is where we get the amazing read from Christopher Chow. and he What? No! Chow, this is uncharacteristic. This is not what you're meant to do. This goes against everything you've done during the last few orbits. Chow, more like... James, what's another word for goodbye? Chow? Chow! Wow, folded king's pre, got away from trip jacks, folded top two, and now gets it in super bad. In a multi-way pot. That would have been the grand who's straight. Yeah. He didn't call. I was Chow didn't totally was screwed him. Nine ten. I feel. I felt. Uh, spare a thought for Christopher Chow, who knitted it up for a whole two levels before blasting off spectacularly with a single pair. Five. 
<laughs> he knitted it up so oh, yeah, hard he's it. walking Never away mind. with an entire I sweater. I didn't realize it. <laughs> 469 players remaining on day 1B, as we still see today. Damn. The field on day 1B so much bigger than on day 1A. Didn't really have How old are you now? Uh, what do you think? 25, 26? Come here. 23. Oh, you're a hoax, uh -huh. Wow. Yeah, they're not off. You just seem so mature. Sounds like you're trying to say the French word for grandma with a mouthful of wine. <laughs> oh, nice. Come here. 475, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm down. <laughs> Negreanu in with four deuce of hearts. Oh, Daniel. 1825. Uh huh. And there's a squeeze from Inieri. This guy does not look happy to be here. <laughs> Oh, he's trying to look serious with his 10-9. Bless him for trying. Well, it could work. On Daniel, at least. When has Daniel ever Whoa. folded anything pre-flop? Oh, my God. I thought four high, maybe. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, I'm not happy about this game. <laughs> You're not happy. What about Gamel? Queen at six, three with two spades. I, 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 I'll, let me say this, reiterate this. Don't learn how to watch poker by watching TV poker. For entertainment purposes only, because you will not even flop this good with four deuce of hearts. This is a dream flop. Testing out the heater theory. <laughs> Here are the gut shot. <laughs> Sixty four hundred. What, what are you doing, Dario? are forged. Imagine folding pre to this guy. Folding kings pre kings. to this guy. Kings. So, the lighting's a little weird on this set. It kind of gives everyone a shadow on their bottom lip. But Kermur actually has some hair there, doesn't he? Like an upside down <laughs> Hitler. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I do know that he's just rivered Broadway. And Dario bluff shoves river, gets called. Yes, there is a little bit of beard underneath that bottom lip. And all of Dario's chips are going to the Frenchman. Also, ew. Nice and good game. Yeah. Someone folded kings to you earlier, Dario, though. So um, <laughs> you got that going for you. Is 10 jack of spades or something? I can't see it. No. no. 10, 10 jack of spades. Oh, you're unlucky in the river. Mm, I was gonna go in any river. Yeah, you would have. You would have won if you. I know. Unlucky. <laughs> Got unlucky. A river there, Chi. Hey, we got George Seabag. Seabag. Yes, five. Kick his rag, Seabag. Pocket sixes for Negreanu. James, I don't want to um, bring the whole mood down, but you know that guy from the Brazilian media, Sergio? Yeah. I saw him post on Facebook the other day. I don't, I can't read Brazilian, but I think Tony Baggio might have passed away. Oh no, that would be sad news. Yeah. 
Well, we are going three-way to this flop, which is jack 6-4. It's a set for Negreanu. Speaking of my favorite poker players with the word bag in their name, Tony Baggio. Shlomi, you don't have a hand. You're facing a bet of 5,500, raised to 12,000 by Negrano. George, what are you doing? <laughs> Daniel just gets people to do ridiculous stuff. Like, this is fantastic. I don't know how. I mean, if you're going to make these kind of moves, don't you have to have some form of equity or some chance to potentially win this part? I thought he was like committed already. Yeah, he was, but he didn't realize that himself. Huh. <laughs> Alrighty then. That was interesting. Yeah, show seven diamonds. <laughs> okay, if I knew that, I just would have called. <laughs> Granu thought he was going to get the lot there. He thought that Seabag was committed yeah. after that raise. Still fence lying. <laughs> you know what I have. <laughs> Big forehead. Sign on my forehead. Set. All right, cool kids at the end of the table. No need to uh, mock the uh, our friend. So here we are midway through day 1B, and Daniel Negranu is chip leader. Matt Affleck and Freddie Deeb in the top five right now. And I guess one of the things that this... Let's just call it an experiment. Let's be polite. This experiment to showcase the day ones is doing is we are getting to see a fair few of the members of Team Pro, right? Uh, we've seen Selena Lynn. We've seen Negranu there, Dari Minieri, Elki. When I talk about Team Pro, I'm saying historically, like people who were on the roster back in 2010. And of course, there was a new member of Team Pro signed just ahead of this event. We saw her win EPT San Remo at the tail end of season six. Liv Bury, the newest member of the team. And I can reveal that she is going to take a seat on the main stage as we continue our coverage of day 1B. Fantastic. I miss Olivia Bury very much. So blinds right now are 150-300. And we have a raise here from 6-4 of spades. Mr. Lee. And there is Liv with pocket jacks on the button. Must be how she looks so ripped all the time. She's got all that weight on her wrists. And I know we don't do lookalikes for other poker players, but look at um. Charlie Carroll alike there. Sebastian Ruthenberg calls in the big blind with King Deuce. It's an 8-6-4 flop. Pretty good for Liv in theory. Looking at all undercards. However, it's two pair for Lee. Put another eight out there. Liv and Sebastian were pretty tight at the time of this taping. We're getting slightly worse for Jax. Some ways they can chop it now. Yeah, this is absolutely the point that you want to find your inner Christopher Chow and fold Jax. Well, with the four card straight, maybe Lee can't really get too creative either. And I think 
Liv is going to check back. Yeah, there's just all kinds of two pair and straight combinations he can have. Although he did raise early, so a little cautious, maybe. So Liv is a big stack right now, 63k. Oh, Beppe's at the table. Michael Greco is at this feature table as well. Look at a Beppe. Plus, cool Shen, Bruno Lopez. Yes. Or should I say, we? Oui. Alexander Zayant. Raises with pocket fours to 750. Presto. Andre Seedon with pocket fives. Calls. Queen eight for live on the button. Is that a big machine gun medallion? Yeah, it is. Is that an assault rifle 15? I mean, I'm not mad about the jewelry. <laughs> but? No, that's it. I was dumb. <laughs> I'm not mad about that cigar either. I think that's an M16, by the way. A machine gun 16. And the re-raise works. <laughs> Dube says, no, not a machine gun M16, just M16. No, I didn't say machine gun M16. I said machine gun 16. Thank you for your comment. Yeah, I kind of agree with John. The necklace didn't age well. I wonder now if Liv looks back at it and goes, oh, what a, what, a, what a bizarre choice from the first event I play as a sponsored pro. Oh, man, JC Tran, what a legend. Yes. Tran opening to 750 with King Jack. Beppe's got fours. Classic pocket fours flop, 977. Yes, still has the best hand. However, you absolutely hate the spot. You hate it and you just, you really hate whatever the turn card is. There's almost no chance the turn card's good for you. Leads though for 1100. Gets called by JC. And sure enough, you are absolutely hating that turn card. The board gets straightier, it gets flushier, it's another overcard to your pair. We're in a ridiculous situation where fours are still the best hand, but Tran's got more equity. Yeah. And it's one more card that can counterfeit you. Yeah. And Michael Greco makes the correct laydown. I say correct, looking at the percentages. Okay, here's a question, Joe. Can you play poker better than former EastEnders star Michael Greco? Because you're going to sweat with him. You're going to play this from Beppe's perspective. This feels like a trick question, but I'm going to say yes. Pocket nine's like under the gun. 
Raises to 1,025. This guy's made an EPT final table. You haven't. That is true. Oh, looks like you're going to have to deal with Cigar Guy. Re raised to 3,000. I mean, I have to say, looking at this with a 2020 lens, which we are, yeah. that's the whole point of EPT Retro, this is a TV producer's nightmare. You've got one player with a machine gun around their neck and another guy with a big fat cigar on the table. I mean, could this have any worse compliance issues thrown in for good measure? Yeah, if there was maybe like a baby in the background. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'm like fine to fold. Hello to Maria Sam. Ho, who's joined us. Maria yeah, says, had to tune in since I missed James and Joe. We miss you too, Maria, but not long to wait until we get to work with each other again. Calling seems fine too. Um, Probably way more interesting to call. Okay. You're not hating that flop with nines, right? You are not hating that flop with nines. No, you are not. I can hear the voice Seance. of Neil Johnson. Seance to me looks like he's trying to contain his excitement right now. I didn't see what the bet was, but it looks like we called. 5,000. Yes. That was a chunky bet. Now it's 10,000. So sick, I agree. Muttering to myself, James, I'm not going to lie. This is exactly how I'd be playing it. I think we may have found your soulmate. <laughs> Do not like this. I don't know how many chips Krakow has. My spidey sense is tingling. I think we're going to be up against tens and jacks a lot. But now with I'm all in. straight outs also. Did you say all in? Yeah. Yeah, there's tens. <laughs> Cigar guy right. calls and Greco is at risk. Jesus he ain't going to help you. <laughs> now what I would not have done there, James, has gone all in. It's it's really hard to say like it's a slam dunk fold, but going all in like what calls you ace eight? Disappointing result for former EPT finalist Michael Greco eliminated on day one B. Meanwhile, we see Matt Perrins move to the top of the leaderboard. Daniel Negreanu now second in chips. A couple of Irish players, Jude Ainsworth and Porrick Parkinson, in the top five. Lines 200, 400 with a 50 ante. It's the second half of day 1B. <laughs> Seriously. Lee a little loose. Raising another atypical starting hand. Ace two's off under the gun, or early I should say. Getting three of that by an even more atypical hand. Queen six on the button. JC Tran has Maria Ho State stone cold killer. Absolute legend of the game. with a legit hand ace jack in the small 
And given what we know about how these two players play so far, you can't blame her for putting in the cold four. <clears throat> Lee is out. GC Tran does not always give up super easy, but does in this particular case. Yeah, two kings. Come with me if you want to live. I had you. <laughs> Blinds have gone to 300, 600 now. It is like someone decided to make a poker player in a lab and they crossed Benny Spindler and Charlie Carroll's DNA. I hope we get to see him play a hand. Ah, oh, cool Shen's in a hand. This should be good. Lopez raises with ace eight. Seven with eight. It is always coming Seddon. He has got the snowmen's. Num num. Oh, Queen King. And it is a Queen high flop. Third best hand headed in the flop. Why not? Sudden bets 1500. Very helpful. There's <laughs> only one overcard. <laughs> Sorry, I was mildly amused by our first bad lookalike of the day. Legitimate bad lookalike of the day. Baby Dog thinks that Seven looks like a sickly Jason Statham. Live, easy value bet. Gets paid. Oh. Jermaine. those our blinds or is that a side event blinds it would seem weird to go from three six to six to yeah yeah, not. yeah it's, it's not us oh cigar guy what if it was a chocolate cigar chocolate cigar <laughs> tran is in action yes come on finish charlie carroll Yami Utila re-raises with ace-queen from the big blind. No, Andy, it's not Charlie Carroll. It's a Finnish player. Who just flashed a, a smile, which I think is illegal in Finland. Smile that hard. Ace Queen versus Ace Three, and it is a King Ten Four flop. We're gonna see JC Tran do a little JC Tranning.
5100. Would not be super uncommon for Ace Queen to stick around. Yeah. Oh. Or we'll do this. I check raise all in. Like, I think this is going to work in this situation when you're up against the worst hand, but you might get some better hands to fold, like hands with a 10 in them might fold, but if they have a king, they're probably going to snap you off. Won't hear you say anything against finished Charlie Carroll. What Shows what he thinks is a bluff. Nice. <laughs> I did try it. Hmm? I did have the best hand tried. <coughs> Maybe. <laughs> Remember, JC trans are JCs. Well, there's a blast from the past. Alan Barry, second in chips right now behind Matt Perrins. Phil Ivey in the top 10 as day 1B draws to a close. 323 players remaining. Confirmed starting field in this event, 848 total players. That's across day 1A and day 1B. And Seddon's back in action here with Ace Jack of Diamonds. Seddon! Roth asks, what was the buy-in? It was a £5,000 sterling main event. So total, total prize pool of £4.1 million. Raise from Cool Shen with pocket tens. All in. And a call. And Lopez flipping for his tournament life. Like Treme versus Boardwalk Empire, one of these two things from 2010 has a slight mathematical advantage. Tens are holding. Ten. Oh, wow. Is it going to be spade, spade again? Is it going to be another flush chop? It is. And you know what they say, Joe? Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop putt. Apart from this guy. Cool shit, not happy. It's actually track seven off his fourth album. I think we found <laughs> the one person who doesn't like a chop pot. <laughs> What's funny is there were bleeps in that, but there was lots of things that. Yeah, I, got I heard through. a few mads for sure. Yeah, and some. Puh. Maybe it was about catching the majority <laughs> right it was the accumulative effect of too much that would have been the problem <laughs> live enjoying a nice cup of yak's blood so live opened with seven four and lee has re-raised with nine five That's right, Sam. In the chop pot song, the almost at the start is implicit. <laughs> Bluff Party says, are we watching this until I'm the end today? We are. There is a but in that sentence. 
I'll explain yeah. all in a moment. Just, just give us five or ten minutes and I'll explain what's going to happen. Then you're going to give us some butt? I like big butts and I cannot lie. Look at this. Oh, here we go. This is some of that early aught poker I've heard so much about. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Yes, junky hands, pre-flop raising war. Let's do this. Oh, what a loser. Oh, good you question. Worked. Good question, Warcan, about the original commentary for these shows. We will discuss that during the next break, which is imminent, by the way. That was a pretty good hand, Joe. Perfect 2010 hand. <laughs> Who has lived re-raised exactly? Do you know the what? Blind. I would so fire the company hired to do the graphics for these shows if they hadn't already been fired 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, this is it getting is. a little car crashy. Yeah, the flat from finish Charlie Carroll with aces. Salzano does re-raise with tens. Something tells me Liv's not going to be winning back-to-back -back EPTs, or this particular EPT. Gianluca Salzano has a gleam wow, in his good eye. Wow, Nice. Did not think she was going to get away there. How much? That's a lot. It is a lot. This feels so suspicious to me. Yeah. The flat shove. Yeah. Going for 4,000. Salzano. Good one. No to that all in. Queen. No good? No good. No good. I was more about him, to be honest. What? I thought your range was like this wide. Uh. His range was like this wide. <laughs> range, huh? <laughs> good luck, indeed. Sneaky flat. Is that the massive overlay tournament the CFO was talking about? I'm not sure. There were so many events running. It's hard to keep track of them all. That's why I have a town. What's that, Ace King? What? You had Ace King, right? No, I had Ace. Ace? Yeah. The good thing is, I get to see if you are lying or not. What is it? Remember? Fishy call, fishy call. Raised from Ruthenberg, flatted by Salzano. Liv calls as well out of the big blind. Three way to the flop. And that flop is 9 7 3. Time to go to war over bottom pair. And why not? Oh. 
it's one better hand to fold and possibly a worse hand with a lot of equity. See this move that much anymore. Maybe no. it's time to bring it back. Curling Master asking for a schedule for these EPT retro streams. There aren't that many of them. It's easy to keep track. We're here every day this week. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then Monday and Tuesday of next week, that's it. Just six shows covering all the events from Season 7, segueing straight into EPT Online. Live coverage of actual live poker being played online. 25? 1,825. Squar can ask, are these big names? Sebastian Ruthenberg is like, one, two, three, four, it's like 15 letters. And also, Ruthenberg was also a sponsored pro at the stage, former EPT champion. Bruno Kulshen Lopez, one of the biggest rappers in France. That's not a bit, by the way. That's, that's a genuine description of Bruno Lopez. Sorry, I underestimated like 20 letters in Ruthenberg. Huge name. And oh. that is a full house for Lopez. Jackety Jack. I kind of want him to lose again just so he'll do another <laughs> swear tear. Case Jack. Now we were 10 on the river for another chop. <laughs> Man, it's a very bluffable river. There it is. He is pissed. <laughs> Flop. Yes. You show your hand? Par four? Mm, you can see it on TV. Uh, still wheeling out that line in 2010. What did you say? What did you say? See it on TV. You see. You're not going to want to see this. Little boy. Baby boy. Baby boy yeah. bluffs Cool Shen off the best yeah. hand. Show it now. And no. he shows it. No. No. Oh, he's raging. Seething. <laughs> raise, raise at the flop. I need bet. No. Yeah. No more. Little, little there. How about one more hand? Yeah. Day 1B drawing to a close. And Lopez says no more folding. Cool Shen is done with the folding business. He's got the snowman. Snum num. He well, can't lose another one. Cigar guy. Doesn't have to worry about him. All sudden. But Libbury's got pocket tens. Not the first time Liz has been associated with that number. Oh boy. And now pocket kings for finish Charlie Carroll. Jutilla the killer. I'm all in. Oh, Bruno. The re raise from kings, the shove from eights. At least Liv can fold tens. Gosh, she's going to get off easy. Later. 
and Tense. Lopez <laughs> at risk and way behind. Yeah, you were third. Come on, I need to put you with one. Oh, the ten, the needle. That's so far out there. I definitely. It's fine. I played. I played the hand right. It's fine. Yeah. Cool Shen needs an eight on the river. Three or spades. I have two tens. Three or spades. Ah, you two sixes. Oh my god. Fred, I like you. And that will see the elimination of Bruno Kulshen Lopez as day 1B draws to a close. Zip it. I wish he had an open now. It's the flash, the spade, the flash. <laughs> Kill me. No, that was a Why shot, dude. Calm down. So at the end of day 1B, it's Claudio Cecchi who's the chip leader. A Scottish player called David Van Plew sits second in chips uh, so we have seen day 1a we have seen day 1b and we have showcased a number of familiar faces including many members of team pokestars pro and we've also been introduced to some new characters some of whom i think we've got quite invested in so at this point joe i bet you're really excited to see how this progresses over days two three and four and what happens to all of these players we've got to meet across the two day ones Yes, you know, I've been invested in a bunch of these players. So, you know, the journey is what I'm interested in now from when we go to a field of like 300 yeah. down to eight or nine. Yeah, I mean, that would be ideal, wouldn't it? Except that's not what happened because as advertised at the start of today's stream, the plan for televising EPT7 London back in 2010 was to make two TV shows from day 1A, two TV shows from day 1B, ignore days two, three, and four, and cover the final table on day five. Comes from a place of wanting to showcase the big names and showcase deep stack play, but you lose the narrative and you lose the journey of the tournament. It was a huge mistake, and I think that was realized as this was being filmed. Already ha. the decision was taken in London that we would not do the same in Barcelona. And when we get to the next leg of the EPT, this was meant to be the plan for all of season seven. But fortunately, an adjustment was made, the pivot, if you like. And when we get to Barcelona, which will be streaming tomorrow, we see that through from day two to day five. And we actually have a narrative. We actually have a story. We actually have a series that makes sense. So now we get a huge gap. And heaven knows what happened to all those players. Heaven knows how the eight players that made the final table built up their stacks and how they made it to the final. But yeah. here they are. And to add insult to injury, as if that wasn't enough, we're going to schlug the guy who finishes in eighth place. We're going to start with seven because Per Umma doesn't even make the final table TV show. Mm, that is rude like so close you bubbled bubble the final table tv show brutal yeah and just to be clear there aren't even live streams to go back to because in season seven it was only the final table that was streamed so there were literally no cameras rolling on anything on days two three and four so we missed the bubble we missed that great day where you have all the excitement of playing down to the final table we are going to pick up the action at the final table so um yeah, we'll just brush over that one, and I'll just say, enjoy. Don't go out here. You score number one. <laughs> Guys, we got seven so this will be a surprise. Seven, seven players seven remaining. So we got this guy. Oh. That's uh, Kyle Bowker. Kyle Bowker, yeah, he crushes on Poker Night America. And we've got John Juwanda. John Juwanda, exactly. Pocket fives here. How mad were they that there was a full tilt pro at this final table? I know. 
We saw that David Van Ploo was second in chips at the end of day 1B, and he comes into this final table as a decent side stack. King Queen suited. Oh, Tom Marchese. Fernando Brito. Yeah, just under. Well, again. Do you remember Arthur Vasek from Berlin? I do not. <laughs> You'll remember him when you see him. Big sweaty Polish guy. Jack 5-3, set of fives for Joanda. I did ask John Juwanda if he'd be willing to come on the Poker in the Ears podcast, given that I knew we'd be covering this, and he politely declined. He said he's not really a podcast guy. Well, in that case, I hope he loses. 270,000 <laughs> called by Van Plew. Okay. Van oh, turns a no good top pair. Real bad. So yeah, just a reminder, 848 total entries in this event from the autumn of 2010. 128 made the money. We're now down to the final seven with most of the 4.1 million pound prize pool still to be won. 900,000 pounds for the winner. Five hundred and sixty K the value bet from Juanda called by Vamplu. This hand going to the river. Vamplu drawing dead. How much value can Juanda get? There's already two point one million in the pot. Keep your hand out there. <laughs> Stick some more chips in. I'll call. Huge bet. Oh, it just snaps it off. And that is a huge pot for John Juanda. I don't know if you can do much else there. Juanda, chip leader at this seven-handed final table with a stack of 9.6 million. Uh-oh. Looks like we're schlooging someone, Joe. Bamplu. Are you sure it's a schlug and not porn? Bamplu in a hand against Tom Marchese. And Marchese is out in seventh place. So down to six now. Marchese cashing out for 100K. Jawanda with fives again. I want to bring back that schluging music. That was good music for schluging. Joe has a pained expression on his face. I don't think he agrees with my assessment. That was... I mean, I felt like I was watching a Cinemax. <laughs> Is that still going? Is that still a thing? I think there's still softcore on Cinemax, yeah. Okay, so Vasek's in this hand as we see Van Plu flop a set of sevens because it's always coming seven. Remember this guy, Berlin, final table, won by Kevin McPhee. I remember now because when he went broke, I said we just had a vasectomy. And I will be saying it again. I don't think he's going to go broke here. He's only got King I. Oh, fives. Can win 
this hand. He's got a straight draw. He's got a gut shot. Brazilians. The burrito rail, not yes. in the hand. Mm, burrito. <laughs> the vamps. 600,000. And Juwan is just so good at getting away from these spots, yeah. No, not that you have to be like a genius there, but still on a board like that, you might think fives are good. You might want to <laughs> try to catch your straight. How sweet. Max Silva and Nick Abu Risk both on David Vamplu's rail. Here is Fernando Brito. And he is all in after Carl Balka opened with Jack 10. Vasek tortured with ace three. What's great is I could have just said, do you remember this guy, Bob Jones, from like the San Remo final table? And you would have been like, yeah. I admitted to not remembering him. So Brito gets it in ahead. Deploy the split screen. There's a six. Oh, the 10 on the turn for Balka. And that is the elimination of Fernando Brito out in sixth place. That's worth 145,000 pounds. Now I can play. Yeah, it works. That same thing last Adios, Brito. I thought asking for a 10 would be getting greedy. 9 would have been good. So we have got five players remaining. Speed it along. Some chip movement over the next few hands. Jawanda still with the chip lead, though. Falling. And that is the elimination of Caven Payment. Apparently, he was in this. Jawanda still chip leader. Van Ploo quite close behind. We're down to four players now. I didn't get to say PA, that PA man, his money. He just got schlugged because we need to spend more time sweating with John Jawanda and playing a hand from his perspective. 10 9 off on the button. This should be really fun. John, one of the old school pros who's managed to, you know, keep up with the game no matter what stage it's in. Right. Sometimes that original gang of TV pros gets left in the dust. David Van Plew has called the raise in the small blind. And we are going heads up to the flop. Ace, ace, nine. Hmm. You know, you'd expect David Van Plew to re-raise a lot of his aces, small blind versus button. So I do not mind a continuation bet. And with two aces hitting, it's a little bit less likely that David's got one. I think Van Plu is going to call with a lot of king and queen high there. And those are hands that you could potentially get value from when you bet your nine again.
You don't necessarily want to give a free river. I think checking's also fine there, but I'm going to err on the side of Jawanda. You get called twice, I would be worried. A little bit worried. Well, a deuce on the river shouldn't have made any difference. This is why playing in position is so much better. We get to see what David's going to do. He didn't do anything yet, right? That's correct. <laughs> do something. Do something or get off the stage. Man, I don't see him. Oh, this is really tough now. The reason I say it's tough is because I don't think David expects us to have a lot of aces either. Oh, tough decision for Juanda. Oh, he's already folded. Van Plu did have an ace. Is. Ace 10. Didn't re-raise the ace. Juanda snap folds. I didn't even have a chance to get it wrong. I love it. I was going to say fold, by the way. I was going to say fold. I was going to say, you don't expect Vamplu to call, like, to float twice and then fire River with a total air ball at yeah. position. Jawanda with Ace Jack. I swear I was going to say that. Right. All in. All in. Awesome. Vasek's had enough. Are we going to flip the coin? All right, I got a call. Yes, we are. We're off to the races. Like Bruno Mars, just the way you are versus Katy Perry's California Girls. One of these two things from 2010 has a slight mathematical advantage. All right, good luck to you. Vasek is the at-risk player and needs fives to hold. So far, so good. King, eight, four on the flop. No jack, no ass. He's very good. <laughs> no jack, no ass. It's kind of accurate. Okay. Is Vasek going to get Greensteined? No, it's the jack. Arta Vasek eliminated in fourth place. Hey, that's 240,000 pounds. That's nearly a quarter of a mil. And there it is. The vasectomy. And crucially, he did not get schlooved to dodgy porno music. Snip, snip. Johnny Hotel Jawanda. Coming in for a raise from the small blind against his old nemesis, David Vamplu. And Vamps has got him dominated. Ace nine against ace three. The Vamps. Just to be clear, yes, I like the music, but I'm wanting to concede it was dodgy porno music. I just happen to have a penchant for dodgy porno music. Don't hate me. Oh, outflopped. Trip threes for Juanda. I had trips. So we're three handed already. Juanda, Vamplu, and Bauka, the final three from 848 who started. Well, not a good time for this. Although 
Oh, the play makes perfect sense. One point six eight million in the middle. And Juwan de Betts, 1.2 million. Worth pointing out the Van Plute only has ace high. Doesn't really have any piece of this board. But he's not folding. Van Plu calls the 1.2, drawing dead. And the river is a jack. So we have a double paired board, a full house for John Juanda. And this is where Van Plu might be thinking that at the very least, he's chopping here with an ace. Yeah, I think it's real easy to get a call from ace high here. So Juanda's bet on the turn was 1.2 million. We've now got 4 million plus in the middle. And it goes check, check. <laughs> don't blame him, don't blame him. Either one the way they played that one. Oh, there's Carl Balker's worm. That can be interpreted so many ways. Balker on no the button. Idea that, pocket jacks. No idea that Kyle Balker finished third in an EPT. Raises. At least third. Sorry for spoilers. <laughs> Raises to 350,000. This is this is one of the few that I know so well. I forgot that not everyone might. <laughs> Jawanda three bets to a million. Seven deuce off of Vamplo. That'll go in the muck. for Crispy asking, where are their masks sad? It's funny because I, you know, obviously we know you're joking because this is a long time ago, but the last EPT that John Jawanda went deep in, he wore a mask the entire time. Balka re-raises with Jax. Jawanda shoves on him, it's all into call. Balcott calls with the best of it. Four to one favorite. I feel like something bad might happen to Kyle Bowker here, guys. A little bit of foreshadowing based on the spoiler from about two minutes ago. Yeah, sorry. Figure might as well just own it now. Clubs are an issue for Balka because Jawanda has the ten of clubs in his hand. 
This crunchy flop does not delight him. Club on the turn and Bowker drawing dead. So there is the third place finish for the American, 300,000 pounds. And that means we are gonna see a heads up battle between John Juanda and David Van Plu. Big discrepancy in the stacks and a big discrepancy in prize money as well. 900,000 pounds to the winner, 545 grand to the runner up. Jawanda has 18.4 million chips. Vamplu has 6.6 .6 million. I don't know why it's gone all psychedelic, but I like it and I now, will James, allow it. This wasn't a huge cliche yet, I don't think. Like this matchup was really interesting, right? Yeah. The old school pro versus the, you know, I don't think the, I'm not going to say John, but like a lot of the older pros, the grown ups, didn't have a ton of respect for the internet kids. And I think every time there was a matchup like this and the well known name didn't win, it was considered a huge upset. So blind to 80, 160. We've got Jack 10 against Jack Do. Sam says, without revealing the result, any talk of a deal you guys remember, I don't believe there was a deal discussed and I don't believe a deal was done. Oh, wow. Trips for both players. Jawanda with serious kicker problems. He does put out a raise. Yeah. Interesting. 520 becomes 1.33 million. I guess he played those aces, trip aces, so slow before. Maybe he thinks his reputation is that he wouldn't necessarily raise with it here. All in but just so happens to run into a hand that cannot get away. All in and a call. David shows a check, check 10. And Tom shows another check. Jawanda can't quite believe that Vamplu has the case jack. So David is Pair all the in. board. And this David holds the better kicker 10. Is a chance for Vamplu to double up through Joanda. I'm running so good over here. <laughs> I have spades as well. Let's see the turn, please. Here's a five. I have spades. Uh oh. There are three spades on the board, and David holds the flush cover with the ten of spades. Let's see the river card, please. It's a queen. And, uh, Van Plu's hand holds, and he does double up through Joanda. That's a flip-flop, eh? Not quite a flip-flop. Pretty much dead even. Oh, Roughly nice. 12 million each now. Now, do you remember anything about the length of this heads-up match? Yes, it was a long one. It was pretty grueling. Long, right? Yeah. Yeah. So after a few more hands, Van Plu opens up an advantage, then Juanda retakes the chip lead. Even Stevens, 12 and a half million each. By the way, if you're asking questions about some of the percentages and some of the graphics, I will remind you the graphics company that did this event did not work on the EPT afterwards. Oh, they did one event and we're out? Yep. 
<laughs> Whoops. Ace six against threes, and it's two pair for Juanda. Yeah, that was a 50 hand skip. I mean, it was an epic heads up battle. This one did go the distance. I remember being quite excited covering it at the time. It was like an interesting heads up battle. It wasn't one of those monotonous, nothing's happening for hour after hour type heads up battles. And there was no RFID yet, right? This is with whole card cameras, correct. Yeah. But the live stream was cards down still in 2010. And that's a flush draw for Vampalu with the eight of spades on the turn. Wait, you had to do heads up live stream with cards down? Correct. Oh, my. I know we've done it. Yeah. But I can't imagine doing it ever again. <laughs> I remember many of the guest commentators on that live stream as we see Joanda River, a full house. Uh, Nick Walthall and I hosted the stream among the guest commentators, Vanessa Selbst and Alex Veldhaus. At this point in time, it was still undecided who would be the co-commentator on the actual TV show. So let's discuss that tomorrow when we cover Barcelona. Sounds fun. I mean, how do you ever consider heroing here with threes? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you turn your hand into a bluff, but it does seem like a strange call. I mean, <laughs> Juan is shocked. He he's might, like, what piece of this book? He's yeah. thinking about it. He might not oh, he is going to. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, bluff raised to 4.9 million. I mean. Okay, I admire Van Plew for turning his hand into a bluff. Unfortunately for him, he's walked into the full house of Juanda. The timing is unfortunate. But what I love about Juanda is how he's just thinking about what hands he could potentially be losing to here. It's not a snap call. All in. Okay, that's going to put some distance between them again. Nice try, buddy. Max Silva and Nick Abu Risk still railing David Van Plute. The final two from a starting field of 848. Four. 0.1 million in the prize pool, 900k to the winner, and the runner-up 545k. We drew attention to that big difference between second and first a short while ago. More bad news for David Van Plew. And thank you, GGETV, for the AV nerdery. No, it's not 1080p because this TV show was made in standard definition back in 2010. Season 8 onwards was when... 380i. The EPT went high def. It is really weird to be looking at fuzzy vision, but hey, that's part of the joy. It's part of the charm and the appeal of covering these retro events as we see Joanda turn Broadway, Van Plew pick up the nut floss draw. What a turn card. And it sees Van Plew bet 625,000. A 
raised to 1.85 million from Juanda. Merlix says this is getting them in the mood for EPT online this weekend. Should be a great stream. Here we go. Jawanda says, I have the nuts. Van Plu is not drawing dead, though. A club gets him out of jail, but there is a 77% chance that Juanda wins EPT London right here. Juanda on the verge of victory. The river card is a club. Van Plu doubles up. And again, they're almost even. Oh my goodness. <laughs> He's like not sure what to say. He's like. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say. So Van Plu with the slight advantage over Juanda as far as chip stack is concerned. King four on the button raises to 600,000. Seven, four, three. So a pair of fours for David Van Plu. I bet with the best of it. Shawanda with the gut shot. Two live cards. Jawanda raising with the 10 6. All in. Van Plu shoves with a pair of fours. Going to deny that equity. And gets the fold. So Van Plu now with the sizable advantage. A reminder, when this heads-up battle began, Joanda had 18.5 million, Van Plu had 6.6, .6, and now it's practically reversed. Heads-up poker can be f so frustrating sometimes. I mean, the two huge pots we saw Joanda lose to Van Plu was really no fault of his own. Of course, no. you know, we're only seeing a, a snapshot. Juanda now down to three and a half million. Gets it in with King Deuce. Van Plu calls with ace three. Juanda does have 40%. But if the best hand holds, we are going to have a champion. It's just how it goes sometimes. Get cooler, get it in good. Get cooler and lose, get it in good and lose, and then get it in as a slight dog and still lose. It's an ace high flop, one diamond. Juwanda is going to need to pick up some equity on the turn. And it is over on the turn. John Juwanda, the runner up, David Van Plu, the winner of the London leg of season seven of the European Poker Tour. This 5K main event from October of 2010, taken down by the Scottish player. Yeah, you can tell he's a little on another planet right now.
Not the last we'll see of John Jawanda. For sure. <laughs> Jawanda, a World Series of Poker Main Event Europe winner in London. Runner-up here in EPT London for 545k. David Van Ploot, the champion, winning this event, which also doubled as the grand final of the first season of the UK and Ireland Poker Tour, lifts the trophy and became an EPT reg for a few seasons. And don't feel bad for John Juanda. As Joe mentioned, we see him again. We're not going to see him again on the EPT Retro, so let's skip forward five years. Barcelona, uh, I believe it was the start of season 12 of the EPT. John Juanda won what was the biggest European Poker Tour main event to that at that point in time. And, you know, Juanda won a seven-figure score for taking down that event. Um, but yeah, that was EPT London from 2010. And sorry, guys, I know the coverage was a bit unconventional. I mean, look, ultimately, we enjoyed the poker we saw during those first few days. It's just a bit strange to have that giant leap forward, that kind of gap in the time space continuum where we suddenly fast forward to the final table. And I guess it was just weird to cover that final table out of context at lightning speed with so many schlugs left right and center but good to really dedicate the time to the heads up battle between Van Plu and Juanda because as you asked about it Joe it did go on a while uh, and it was a meaty one and quite exciting to watch yeah you know it's kind of weird because uh, when you watch the tv coverage of it you don't get really the whole picture you just get like a little piece here and there but then when you're watching the live coverage of it it's also hard to appreciate in the moment because it is so long and it is so grueling so even though, like, I think it's good to have both perspectives, I guess, is the point yeah. I'm trying to make. Yeah. Um, so, as mentioned, the next televised event is Barcelona. That's what we're going to be covering tomorrow. More conventional. This is where we start to see the TV shows evolve even further. And we get that covered from day two through the bubble, down to the final table, down to a winner. It's a fun event. It does also involve a player who has a very special place in Joe Stapleton's heart. So make sure you're watching tomorrow. And a reminder, we're here for all the rest of this week. Uh, we've got, so we've covered off London today. We've got Barcelona tomorrow. Then we've got PCA 2011 on Thursday. We've got Berlin on Friday. And then the start of next week, Monday is the grand final from Madrid. Tuesday is the tournament of champions. All previous EPT winners get to come back and compete in a free roll that's a really fun one and that's a great way to celebrate the start of EPT online which we are going to be streaming for six days with coverage of the high roller the super high roller and the main event so lots more streams to come but really we want to make sure you're back with us tomorrow the usual time that's 6 30 UK time 7 30 Central European time Joe it's been a delight I'm glad retro's back I've missed it I didn't think I'd find that but actually going back over these old EPTs is a lot of fun Nothing has made me appreciate the past more than the present. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. So we will be back tomorrow with Barcelona. Hope you're back with us tomorrow as well. 1.30 Eastern, 6.30 UK, 7.30 Central European time. But for now, from, me, from Joe Stapleton and me, James Hartigan, it's good night. Good night.